Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, we've got today Malik Khan from the XTB Group. Um, it's a true pleasure to have you here, Malik. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Malik has um, started as a trader back in 2005. He's now been trading. Ah, oh, sorry. I'll, I'll have to do this, this, this a different way. There or you could say, tell us about yourself. I've got like a paragraph written here. I could use that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'll shorten that part and I'll just say, tell us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, we've got today Malik Khan from the XTB Group uh, who started um, as, a, as a junior trader and a customer support clerk in the City of London uh, back in 2005. He's now been trading mostly Forex um, for about six years. Um, he's now a, a director with uh, the institutional arm of the XTB Group. So not only he's, he's been he's trading um, like, like all of us are, uh, but also he's um, also providing him and his team are providing liquidity to other banks and other uh, retail brokerages. So he's one of those few people who have seen both sides of the industry, who have seen the, the retail, the user side of the industry, as well as the, um, the kind of more institutional one. However, without further ado, Malik, um, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thank you, Tess. Absolute pleasure to be here. Um, a little bit about me. Well, um, my academic uh, sort of background uh, lies in economics and computer programming. Um, after I finished my degree back in 2005, I joined a, a small brokerage company, uh, mainly doing um, sort of customer services, um, where related to trade carriers, etc. Um, and I would deal with that on behalf of the the customer service team that dealt with. The, the end client and I would basically take on the queries that were related to trading and then get them resolved in, in as timely manner as possible. Um, from there um, I basically um, joined the, the trade desk itself. Um, I think it took around eight months worth of uh, understanding of the market and basically I was then um, hired within the same company as a junior dealer. And my responsibility then changed um, purely from um, dealing with the queries to rather executing the trades into the market. So over the years, I've, I've worked for um, a number of brokerages um, around the world. Um, most, mostly all of them have been in London. And currently, I'm working with the XTB Group, as you said. Um, it's a, um, a retail business, so on the brokerage side of things, um, they have excellent technology, they have uh, uh, sort of instrument coverage from around the world, and from there we, we took that same idea and made it into a B2B entity, it's known as XOpenHub, and it deals mostly with banks and brokerage companies who are looking to offer similar retail trading facilities to their clients. So our role is to basically go do some fact-finding, um, we then create bespoke solutions for the banks and the brokers, and then we're able to deploy a full-scale brokerage solution for them. Um, again, I was very confident about the level of technology that we had and the, the liquidity coverage that we would be successful, and so far XOpenHub is now 20% of the overall group's earnings. Wow, that's amazing. So it's it's been a tough ride, but we finally <laughs> got there. So it 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 certainly does give you a, a sense of achievement for sure. One of the um so what well the way that actually uh, Malik and I met was at um an event, uh, I believe right. in, in Holborn uh, here a couple of weeks ago where where you were speaking and and one of the things that um, really caught my attention is is the amount of study and, and your passion about um, Gans work. And, and gas angles and, and so on. So um, I, I think it, it kind of it was a no-brainer for for us to to have this short podcast and, and kind of learn a little bit more about uh, you know the <laughs> theory right. behind Gan theory and and what kind of you know what piqued your interest, what brought you to to a Gan theory, Malik? Well, I mean, over the years, um, as I worked around brokerages, um, I had my fair share of exposure to trading strategies. At the same time, um, I wanted to be a retail trader myself. I wanted to trade from my own account as well. And uh, in the early days, uh, when I started trading myself, um, I found myself using tools which were quite commonly available, normally on all of the trading platforms, such as you have your moving averages, RSIs, MSADs, stochastics, etc. Now, using these 
um, tools to place trades, in my view, is not a bad thing at all. But I was more interested in tools that can give me sort of like a, an accurate information about instruments' behavior, where I can create projections and then trade on the back, on the back of those projections themselves. Um, later, I explored um, uh, tools such as Pivot Points, uh, even Fibonacci, which I found uh, very amazing. Uh, it, it's an amazing tool to be uh, trading off as well. And then later, I was introduced to GAN by one of the fund managers who happens to be a client of ours um, uh, in that company I was working for. And looking at his, his trading history, I mean, it was absolutely impeccable. I had no doubts in my mind that I should be looking into GAN's theory further. And what I found was that um, with GAN's work, um, you have many theories. He has created uh, many different trading techniques and forecasting method. You don't have to know every single one of them. You can you can pick and choose the one that you feel the most comfortable with. So for right. example, myself, I've, I've chosen Gantt's uh, angles uh, using the square of nine. Um, and out of many other tools that he has, and, and the precision that I found with the square of nine was something that I was really impressed with. And after all these years of trading the, the theory itself, I still get really shocked that you, you draw a line on a chart and the stock market happens to come to an absolute halt just because that line is there. So <laughs> it still sends shivers down my spine every time I look at the market just absolutely raging away in a direction and then it comes to a complete screeching halt. It's, it's very interesting. Amazing. Amazing. So um, let's take a, a step back, Malik. And um, so for, for those uh, who are not 100% familiar with, with GAN theory, um, what exactly is it? Well, um, I, I created a small presentation for you all to see as well. Um, let me just... Um, so, basically what you see on your screen right now. So, this was um, Dr. W. D. Gann. He was uh, born in June 6, 9, uh, 1878. Um, he was a mathematician. Um, and in the early 1900s, um, he was known to have traveled um, to Egypt and India. On his return, um, he started working on a, on a forecasting method, and in, two, uh, in 1902, he basically um, started to really come to attention from the Wall Street, because his trades were extremely precise and very, very profitable. Um, he actually did one of his trades in 1909, which made him um, a success, and, and this is when the market actually started paying attention to his uh, forecasting methods. And basically, his um, sort of um, concentration, um, so say, was mainly based on angles and something called the square of nine, which was something that he was very keen about. It's not something he invented, but it was something that he was absolutely fascinated by, and, and that's how the, the whole thing um, kind of came into play. And basically, what you would see during this, uh, uh, this lecture would how he came about doing something. It's, it's quite interesting, um, and hopefully this will benefit you as well. Let's make it happen. All right. <laughs> so, basically, what is the square of nine? So, just to get um, a basic understanding of the square of nine, I know as as you see on your screen, um, you have towards your left the, the pyramids, and then on the right hand side you have a set of numbers. Um, basically, the set of numbers is what we need to be looking at. And here, what you would find is that um, it is a, a a simple series of numbers just placed on a grid. So what you would see is that the center of this particular grid starts with um, number one, and it works westwards towards two, and then it changes direction to three, and then spirals out in that particular mode all the way out to infinite numbers. Now, Initially, what this thing was actually used for, in, in my view, it was just to get um, a simpler way of working out square roots. For example, here you have, uh, right directly on top of 1, you have 4. Uh, 4 square root is 16, and, and so on. So, I believe that this was, in early days, or even in the 
um, uh, diagrams that we've seen so far are just simply a, a very easy, simple tool for people to have in order to uh, work out the square roots. And what he saw within this is something very peculiar. Um, the reason for the pyramids is purely because if you were to see a pyramid from bird's eye view, I think this is how you would see it. You have like a square with, with a pointy edge directly in the center. So everything sort of starts in the center and works outwards. Right. Now, um, square and square roots, as I was explaining earlier, so you have um, uh, something which um, was mainly used as a calculator in early days when we didn't have these um, uh, sort of like advanced calculators uh, nowadays. So the numbers are sort of arranged um, starting with number one and they spiral outwards. And you would find something which is quite peculiar is that you have odd numbers and even numbers existing within this same square, which, which was quite interesting. So looking at angles, which is something that um, Gan sort of introduced to the square of nine, is purely based on uh, mathematical, uh, sorry, with apologies, uh, geometrical patterns. So here you have uh, the main cardinal cross, which kind of runs directly in the center mm -hmm. and across, and it represents 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. The blue uh, diagonal lines that you see are basically uh, 45 degree angles. So it's split into um, uh, 90 degrees, 180, 270, and 360, and then you have the 45 degree angles sitting within them. Now, I've been asked this question quite a few times. Why does the market react to these particular angles? And honestly, I would love for somebody to tell me because I honestly don't know why. <laughs> it just does. It's, it's so, one of those things with technical analysis and you know even Fibonacci, they just work. Um, they work. But as exactly. to why they work, you know, we can all come up, I'm sure, with fancy theories, but no one really knows, right? Exactly. I mean, my personal opinion, um, if you were to ask, was would purely be that maybe algorithms, um, auto trading systems are maybe designed to react to this. I'm not too sure. I can't say that with conviction. So, um, again, it, it kind of leaves the the question mark whether uh, they are or they're not. It kind of comes back to uh, George Soros's, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy type thing, right? So, if Correct. everyone in the market follows it, then it's going to happen. Why it happens in the first place, no one knows, but it just happens. Exactly. Spot on. Exactly that, and it's very unusual. So um, here, what we're looking at, um, I've just drawn the 45 degree angle, so visually it, it starts to make a little bit more sense. So you always start sort of in the center, and from the center you're working outwards to the west, and then your first angle that you will come across would be the 45 degree angle and then it moves to the 90, and then 45, and then 90. So it continues all around and the, the square. So right. the most important thing that um, uh, I believe is uh, the rotation of this particular um, cycle as you go through it is that you should always start from one and working outwards to the west. I've seen some theories previously which uh, kind of uh, suggest that we should be starting from the right and working the other way. Um, I personally, from my opinion, as from my trading point of view, I think starting from the west on the left-hand side is much more uh, effective. So what we are really doing with this particular angle movement is to work out the support and resistance levels that are going to be applied to your trading and hopefully using these particular numbers we should be able to project the support and resistance on a chart as well. Right. So here just wanted to quickly explain um, how this whole square of nine is actually constructed. So what we have over here is a formula that uh, sort of can explain how this whole thing um, is constructed is in order to get your next price, you have to have a starting point, which is going to be your starting price, and then the angle that you're looking to project. So the definition here, Y stands for 
your next price and that would be uh, derived using your current price and the angle and the whole thing is, is squared. So in this particular example you see that I have used um, after number one I've used number nine which is a 45 degree angle and I'm also looking for uh, the rotation as well. So 360 degrees over 180 degrees. So that gives us a total of 25 and as you can see on that small diagram uh, next to the formula you see that moving from 9 to 25. So that's how the levels are constructed on the 45 degree as you're going along. Now what I've done is here uh, this morning I was looking at uh, uh, the uh, DAX chart for example. Um, I, I came in in the morning and I took a screenshot of what was on my charts at the time. So what we are looking for over here is that using the, the square of 9 we've, we've managed to build a support and resistance level lines um, based on the calculations that we did earlier. So what you can see over here is it is using some support um, and you can also see some resistance points up there as well. Now if I could take your attention to my other screen which is my currently uh, a demo system just for testing on the extension environment. What we can see over here is that we always take sort of the, um, uh, the day's price and then based on the day price we project what, could, what potentially could be happening on the day. Right. So here you, we, we took the starting price on the day which was the open uh, of the, the trading day and then we basically said okay well if this is how the, the square of 9 is moving um, our 45 degree angle should be sitting at 664, 90 at 691, 45 again at 717 and 772. Now using that I've able to work out on the opposite side as well. So simply by using a subtraction instead of the, the addition uh, element that we had in the formula we are able to project the reverse figures as well. So in case we're looking for the support, we will be using the subtraction value to work out where the next support would be. So here you have up, up here the, the 45, you have the, the 90 and it goes onwards to the first four or five levels. I generally use like around four levels to the top and three to the bottom just to see if I'm in the right sort of ballpark. And if I am and the market continues, I just keep adding the levels as I go along. Sorry, uh, Malik, just one, one quick question before we move on. So uh, just to, to take a step back. So we've Sorry. started with, with the, just to take a step back. We, we started with, um, uh, with kind of the, the, the square with a square of nine. And Correct. then from that point on, you're saying that, okay, you can mathematically derive each one of those angles. Correct. Uh, which then you, you take that square, instead of starting with a number one, you start uh, with the current market price, and I think you're going to make a comment about that in a second. So you start Absolutely. with that price, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then we can derive these angles. So when it comes to, to financial markets, is, in, is it correct to say that, therefore, what we get are actually not angles, but more like mathematical transformations of the market price? And then we Absolutely. take these transformations, and we overlay on them onto a chart. Correct, absolutely. So we're not actually laying on the, the, the angles themselves. We're actually laying on the, the levels produced on the back of where the angle actually sat. So something known as centering. So with the centering, what happens is that instead of starting with point one as the reference point um, for, the, for the square of nine, it will make it quite complex if you were to have something which starts from 1 and DAX being at a price of uh, 11,700 right now. So you will have roughly exactly the same amount of squares right now. And then in order to project you will have to probably add another two, 300 squares to the, to the equation. So it makes it extremely complex for um, somebody to sit at home and try and work out 11,000 sort of um, squares. Um, before they start trading for the day. So what we do is we, we normalize the, the situation here. What we do is we use the, the day's open 
as a reference point, and then we project what the, the 90 degree angle would be and the 45s, and we go around the whole of the um, the 360 degrees in order to project what we should be looking for today. So we have eight angles for each uh, market open price. Spot on, exactly. Okay, got it. Um, so when we, we project these effectively eight lines onto a chart, um, would they, they wouldn't be symmetrical, would they? No, they don't have to be symmetrical. Um, they, they are based purely on the angles. So between sort of like 45 to 90 doesn't mean that there will always be a difference of, say, 20 points. It, it's not the case. As you can see over here, we have uh, our first level sort of started this morning at uh, 11,582, and then our next level up was at 664, which is quite a distance away, and then you have the next one only 30 points away, less than 30 points away, in fact. So this basically doesn't have to relate to exact mathematical sort of uh, um, increment, as, as you would say, between one level to the other. It's purely based on the angles themselves and what number, what next number it sort of picks up. Got it. Okay. Okay. So essentially, um, every time we 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 lay the the uh, the GAN levels at this stage onto a chart, we're going to have eight different levels. Um, and so, are the eight different levels going to be um, all? Are they going to be centered around the current price, or they're just going to be above the market or below the market always? If that well, makes they, sense. Yes, absolutely. I mean, what, what we what we're doing is we're we're trying to normalize the data to use it for intraday. So what we're doing is we're using today's open price as the center of our uh, sort of trading strategy. So we know where the where the market opened. What we are trying to then do is to work out where does the market go next, and they don't have to look at the data from from the day before because obviously day before's opening was slightly different from today so what we did was we projected what happened yesterday and and we traded it and then a new trading day starts so we reset the whole thing back to what we need to be doing today for example got it and and where exactly so do 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 we come in with the the subtraction element you were referring to oh um that's below here so up here, you have the actual prices where you are projecting the upwards movement. So if you look at the GAN wheel, it sort of moves um, spirally outwards. So it's going to always, if you spiral around the, the square, you would find the next numbers that the market should be going to. Whereas if you were to look for what are the support levels for the day, then you need to be able to subtract to be able to move back a level or, or a degree to work out what was the previous number that we need to be looking for. So the ones at the bottom that you see over here, these are the support. So 11,529, 11,556, and 82, they acted as our support points from the days open. Right. So effectively, you're saying that for each market open price, mm -hmm. we would have eight GAN um, resistance levels and eight GAN support levels. Support Exactly, and and you can spiral outwards. I mean, you can continue around the spiral. If, for example, the market has uh, an exaggerated movement in, in in a particular direction, it doesn't mean that we limit ourselves to just to eight and basically um, close the day of trading and uh, and and that's it. We we continue onwards. We we basically say, okay, well, if, for example, today um, the DAX goes to eleven thousand seven hundred and seventy-two. I need to then work out where I need to be projecting next. So what is my prediction going to say about where the next level is going to be? So I just move to the next degree upwards in the spiral to work out what that number is and basically plot that onto the chart as well. Right. Right. Um, how come then on, on this chart, for example, um, we don't have eight lines to start with? Well, I mean, this was sort of like a, a test that I did this morning just to see where the market was. And again, yeah, it sat pretty well. So we continued with it. But as as the day goes along, I just keep adding more. Um, so I'm, I'm never limiting myself to just these levels. It's just uh, for demonstration purposes. That I've just drawn like four lines up. Sorry, Malik. Um, let's, just, just to clarify this point um, sure. off the record. So... Essentially, we're saying that for each market open, you've got eight GANs on the way up, eight GANs on the way down. Correct. Um, so should 
every time someone draws GAN lines on a chart, should we not have eight lines show up instead of seven? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can do, uh, forget the, the bottom ones. The top ones, you can have up to eight. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Are you saying because when you draw GAN lines, mm -hmm. every time you draw one, so you, you, you can just decide to draw the first three angles, not the full eight? Correct, exactly. I mean, it's entirely up on preferential basis. So if you prefer to do it all in one go, then fine. But if you just want to look at what's happening during the day, now what will prompt me to add more levels is purely because the 772 is breached. So I'll be like, okay, well, what will be the next level up? And I will just basically take that from the GAN wheel and plot that on the chart. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, review. Oh. Okay, so um, effectively what we're saying here, Malik, if, if I understand it correctly, is, is uh -huh. from your charting platform, you can draw a GAN line um, every time. So you can just decide to, uh, if the market hasn't moved much, maybe you can decide to just draw a couple. If, if the market has had a massive movement upwards, you can decide to draw uh, five, six, seven, eight, even 10, and you just continue projecting through that uh, GAN wheel, correct? Correct, absolutely. Simply and the same when you thing get, on the way down. Absolutely. I mean, as, as soon as you have your um, GAN level, just grab yourself a, just a normal sort of uh, a line tool, with apologies. Um, let me just, so here. So we just get a normal horizontal line, and that would be the next calculation that I may have done. And it's kind of saying that this is where the next level is. So I just keep projecting the lines as the market keeps progressing in a particular direction. Got it. Got it. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Shall, shall we take a quick look perhaps at, at how these uh, GAN lines uh, behave in the market? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is current live market right now. So here what you have is um, me running the, the tool on a H1 chart. So I'm just going to change the, the time frame here to H4, possibly. Now, we do have to keep something in mind that in the early days when Gan was actually trading, um, he was trading on the back of um, the old school ticker tapes, etc. So the amount of data they had was quite limited, and the amount of charting capabilities that they had were extremely limited. So he basically used sort of like H4s or D1s purely for his his forecasting method because getting the information to um, like or have the ability to have the privilege like we do these days is going to be something that was virtually impossible back in those days. So um, looking at H4 chart over here, so we can see that the market is currently failing on this particular level, which is at 717. So what we are hoping to do over here, we're not going to change the trend. So it's not like if the market is going into a particular level and fails to break above it, we start to short. We don't do the shorts here. This is not a confirmation that's telling me that the market is currently looking for a reversal. What we need to be able to do is to monitor the market, if a particular level is breached, you should be out from your trade anyway. And you should wait for confirmation. And the confirmations normally come in the method of a particular candle closing above or below the level and the next candle opening in that same um, direction. So at the moment, we are undecided. So we can see that we have a, had a failure over here. Um, the market is looking to test the 91 level again. If the market does manage to find support here, it will try one more time to try and break the 17. If the 17 is breached and the market actually does close the candle above the 717.9, then we should be able to project ourselves to take profits in the new entry buy price at 772. So it's, it's quite important for um, uh, for the trader to be able to um, wait for a confirmation before reacting to a particular level. So even if I take this down to, say, for example, a five-minute chart, I can see that I need confirmations here. So every confirmation is giving me 
um, the confidence that I, I can get into this market. Here we can see a small failure over here. So generally the way I trade is, say for example, if this is the level I was looking to be at, so I've seen that the market's breached this particular level, it's closed above it, the next candle opens um, at the same level above it, then I would be picking up along with a, a very tight stop loss. Um, I cannot emphasize the fact that stop losses are extremely important here and you cannot ignore them, you cannot go into a trade thinking that it's going to take support of the level below, it may not do that, it may actually continue um, into the next level down. So a stop loss is, is, is critical here. So as you go into um, that particular trade, um, if for whatever reason at the moment we do know that uh, we have some market data out, so the market is reacting a little bit uh, um, on the on the sell side, so we would be out of our trade here. But if you look at the overall um, scheme of things, since this morning we have hit a few levels very successfully. So having one level being breached and 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 trading below is not going to change um, the overall projection that we have on the levels. So as we can see over here, as I was talking about it, market just stops. I, I don't know why but it's just come below to this level, it's tested it, and we'll see in the next few candles how the market behaves, and it may actually try and go back and, and test the 717 again. And if it does do that, I will pick up another long with a projection that um, my entry it will be coming in at 17, and the exit will be coming at 72. Got it. Um, shall we perhaps take a, a quick look at, um, at a couple of, uh, of levels on... Um, on, on, a, on a few forex pairs, Malik. Yes, absolutely. Um, what I've done over here is um, I have an absolutely clean chart over here. Um, let's just do that. Okay. So this is our H1 sort of projection. Uh, let's just get H4 up here. With apologies. Apologies for that. Sure. Okay, well, I'm just trying to open another window because this one is not reacting very well. All right. Right, so looking at this particular example, so first of all what we need to work out is um, what is the opening price for a particular instrument. So let's just do that real quick. So here what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the, the D1 chart. So what we can see over here is roughly the market has been, um, let's just have a quick draw line here. So roughly what we're looking at, the market on the day opening at around 1.0796. Right. So let's just quickly get some calculations in. Okay, 1.07961. Okay, 107. Right. So what we are seeing over here is that the market sort of opened and it's kind of going downward. So what we need to do is to first work out where the support is going to be. So over here, again using the subtraction formula, um, we see that our first support comes in at 
0786. Sort of around this level here. Where did uh, we get that uh, first support number from, Malik? Uh, the first support number, again, is the negative of the formula I was showing you earlier. Got it. I guess what I'm asking is, is uh, does the platform tell us uh, what the numbers Fortunately, are? It doesn't. And this is one of the, the key things about um, GAN. Unfortunately, I don't see many trading platforms having the ability to um, allow you calculators, so it's generally getting the good old calculator out and to work out where the next level is going to be. Right, got it. So, and the next level that I see coming in, let me just quickly do that. is at 1.0722 sort of sitting at here so what we are this is just a first two level projection. So it's basically telling us that the market should take some support on the downside at 1.0722. So that would be the next level we'll be looking for if the first level of 1.0785 was breached. And as you can see that the market did penetrate through here and it, it is on a down spiral. It may actually go and test this level now um, before it decides what to do next. Got it. Got it. Okay, I hear you. Now, um, the biggest reason I see most of the people not being able to uh, sort of get accessibility to GAN is purely because it does require some homework. Um, and based on that homework, you should be able to project these lines quite easily. So plotting is not the problem, it's just getting the, the, the levels in is the problem. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, makes sense. Um, is, is there any kind of online calculator or, or website you can recommend uh, where, where can traders can punch in some numbers? Absolutely. So basically, now we know that the basic principles of um, uh, the GAN levels, I am just going to quickly pull up. So if you were to go online, just type in GAN square of 9 calculator here. Yeah. And you have some a few firms that offer it. Um, so, for example, we are in Pivot Trading. This is a very, very good website. Pivot so Trading. At the moment, pivot Trading, correct. So here we can put in the current market. It does ask you for current market price. That doesn't mean that you put in right now price. It's not right. going to give you a very good projection because what you're doing is you're then taking on what is happening right now and where you should, where's the next level down. It may not be so accurate as something that where the market opened and you project on the base of it for your whole day's worth of trading. So okay. here, if you were to do exactly the same thing, nothing different here, 961, oh, apologies, you don't use the, the decimals here, 1.0722. Is this good for Forex? With apologies, one second. Sure. We can retake this if you want. It's not yeah, a problem. Yeah, sure. What do you want to start from? Um, so when you asked me to get the um, online Websites. tool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I think if you come back to the previous chart, then we can go from there uh -huh. again. Perfect. Yeah. So, Malik, are, are there some online calculators or websites perhaps you can recommend that uh, traders can use to, to work these levels out? Absolutely. I mean, um, now that we know the basic principles of it, I didn't want to give it away um, to begin with, purely because um, understanding how the actual maths work is very important. So, sure. there are a fair few companies out there who would uh, gladly offer their services where you can actually use their calculators for free of charge. So, let me just quickly pull up one. 
here we have one of the companies. Um, it's called PivotTrading.co. And using this, PivotTrading.co.in. Yep. Correct. So here, um, even though it's asking you for the current price, doesn't necessarily mean it's asking. Uh, is you have to put in today's um, right now price. I always prefer to put in the days open because it gives you a much better projection of where the market should be going within the day. Putting something right. which is quite current is only going to reduce the, the first level that you should be looking for. And sometimes um, if you were to, for example, use the level which is right now, you may not actually get the correct projection. So always use the, the days open as your reference point. Got it. So, so um, just, just before we move on, so are you saying that um, uh, these levels should only be used on a daily time frame, or are you saying that regard? Are you saying, on the other hand, that look, you can use them on any time frame you want. However, no matter what time frame you use, I recommend you use the days open. Absolutely. I mean, you you have to use the days open, and I mean, trading on a particular time frame. I think it's purely on traders' sort of like preference. Some people like trading on a five minutes chart. Some people like trading on a, on an hour chart. Some people like trading on dailies or H fours. It doesn't really make a difference because you're kind of um, trading on the same kind of projection. So the numbers don't actually change. It's just your time frame and your preference changes. So here, what we have done is we have put in this morning's open on on the uh, on the Euro USD, and what we found is that it's it's projected some numbers for us already, and pretty spot on actually. So here you have the the resistance, the first points as you're going up, if the market is going up, and you also have your support lines as you can see over here. I picked up that 107.22 here, so it's just giving you the the different levels as you're going down as well. So here, um, if you are short, you would call this resistance and this support, or vice versa. So at the moment, the market is heading for a, um, a sell. So what we're looking for is the next level downs as we um, sell off. Also, something really unique about this website is that it actually gives you recommendations. So it's saying to you is that if the market is going up and you want to buy, then buy at the point of 1.0819 with your targets. Right. And these targets are actually just shy of the resistance point. So what the the website is actually doing is is actually working out the core resistance and support levels. The buy and sell recommendations are based on these support and resistance levels, but it's actually telling you to come out just shy of the level itself. So you are able to bank the trade um, as it goes up and gets nearer to the level. So as you saw from uh, when we were looking at the, the market that sometimes what happens is that the, uh, a price is tested but at the very same second the, mar the market reacts quite uh, aggressively to these levels and you may actually miss the price. So in order for you to have a, a safeguard in place you basically take on the trade and you come out just before that level is due to be hit. So here, the first target happens to be at 1.0845, where we were looking at 51 as the first resistance. So it's just giving you six pips difference between um, the time that you come out and by the time the resistance level gets hit. So you're always coming out just shy of the levels themselves, so you are kind of uh, in confidence that when the level is hit, you'll definitely be out of the trade as well. What's the yellow LTP number? So, um, as we were talking about the the center, so it's just giving you reference points. I mean, the, the centering of the the, the uh, open price basically means that you use the price of the day as the center, and you work sort of from this point onwards into a spiral outwards. Now, what it's doing is it's just taking a few. Um, price points before that. So it's just saying, look, we are in the right ballpark. So let's just, it started the, the whole thing at 1.05 and it's working outwards. And it's found your particular price to be sitting sort of here. And then based on that, it's basically working out the next levels around it. So it's exactly what your price that you sort of like suggested over here as the, as the market price. And it's just telling you that where it will be sitting roughly within the square of nine. Oh, okay. So effectively, this website will 
won't use exactly the center, sorry, it won't use exactly the price you give it as a center. Correct. It will use a close approximation and then it will tell you, look, the exact price that you entered is actually more around here in the chart. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, since it is willing to do all the hard work, um, I don't mind it being just slightly off. <laughs> I think it's okay. Right. It's acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty much how the, the square of nine works. I, I, I totally understand that this is something that most traders probably never seen or heard of before. So it does seem a little bit daunting, but give it a go. Uh, do some test trades, um, project them onto your charts, and just work on the levels and see how these levels behave and react as you're trading through the day. Got it. How how do you use these uh, these levels on 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 a day to day basis in in your trading? I'm sure you have them on your chart, but practically, you know, other than than looking at these levels as as good supports and resistances, um, do you do anything else with them, or you just keep them as supports and resistances, and then maybe you have other indicators that drive your strategies? Well, generally what I do is I, uh, I keep a moving average um, sitting at around 200, so I know roughly where the direction is. I don't use moving averages to be able to price my trades purely because um, I, I find that the, the way the moving averages are calculated, they tend to be quite, um, quite a lagging indicator. It sort of gives you the, uh, the number that you're looking for in the moving average once the event has actually happened. So it's not going to give you something which is quite current. So it's a reference point. I also use stochastics. They're, they're a very good tool. Um, say, for example, if between 0 and uh, 100, stochastic is sitting at around 80, I wouldn't be looking to enter a long, for example. So it's, it's more or less a lower indicator. Um, it's not a sort of like a trade recommendation tool. Um, it just tells me if the market is overbought or oversold. So if I'm looking to enter a trade, I probably wouldn't think about entering a trade if the market is showing an oversold sort of like a, a trajectory. Got it. And other than that, I keep things fairly simple. Uh, I don't think um, uh, trading should be made complicated. It's a, it's purely maths based. So I think um, besides the economic and fundamentals that, that are already creating uh, a lot of havoc in the market, I don't think we need to make the technical so complicated that make decision making becomes a very difficult process. Got it. Excellent. Very good, Malik. I think we've uh, we've had an amazing session. I think it was very informative to start from kind of you know the basics of, of uh, the GAN square and, and take it from there um, and then I think you, you've made uh, a lot of people's life a lot easier by, by uh, showing us that website where <laughs> um, you know the traders can just punch in the numbers it will of give course. them a number and then um, and then you can just plot, plot the, the numbers on a chart. Um, before we uh, wrap things up Malik um, you know are there any kind of uh, closing uh, Kind of nuggets or or uh, or pieces of wisdom that you know course, you'd like to share with, 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 uh, with our listeners. Uh, as you know, as you spent so many years in in uh, trading and and working in the city of London, I'm sure you've seen a lot of interesting things. Absolutely. I mean, when it came to the professional side of things, when I was working for um, like execution desks or um, sort of like a proprietary desk, um, the situation was quite different. I mean, it, it, they more or less look at the company's position rather than your own trading position. Sometimes we had to enter trades which we didn't think made sense, but for the company, it did make sense because they wanted to be ne neutral on their FX side. For example, it's a it's a multinational company operating in in 18 countries. Then what you need to be doing as a company is to be as neutral on the FX rates as possible. So we were taking positions just to net the exposure rather than to be able to make money from that that trade. So it was quite different when it comes to institutional side of things. From from my own personal opinion and from my own trading side of things, it's uh, you know. Um, GAN has definitely been very, very useful for myself. Um, it's not simple. I, I totally agree with that. Um, and, and it does seem quite daunting when you look at it for the first time. But uh, a little bit of practice, just draw these lines. Even for uh, some people who are wanting to sort of understand this a little bit more, use the formula to actually physically work out the levels because then it will give you a much more 
um, uh, insight, understanding about the um, the mechanics of this particular instrument. So, it, it, for anyone who's looking to look into this um, or is into technical trading, um, do explore this because it, it is quite amazing. I mean, you are you're just seeing some levels. Maybe you find uh, a market or an instrument which reacts on a certain um, angles which are not. Um, sort of like prescribed by Gan or hasn't been described by him at all. Um, I do. I have come across instruments which react to a completely different set of sort of like um, percentages. So every stock um, can have its own personality. In other words, so we shouldn't limit ourselves just to use these particular um, sort of like uh, degrees. We should explore and and look at other um, sort of like degrees which might be much more effective for a given instrument. But what I can confidently say is that GAN has effectively um, added a lot of confidence in the way I trade because I am now able to use something which is visually presented to me. So these lines are showing me my parameters, which, which really does help a lot. And again, never um, underestimate the power of the market. So do use risk management strategies, stops have to be in place um, before you go into a trade. So immediately as I go into a trade, for example, um, I would have the bracket orders around it, which is a take profit and a stop loss. Either one of those conditions will be met at some point in time. So I don't take risks. I don't put um, sort of like uh, uh, hopes in, and uh, all of my confidence into the movement of the market in my sort of um, uh, favor. So be very careful. Um, the market does have its own tendencies. Economic factors can change the, the view of the market quite instantly. So keep an eye out for those. Keep good risk management and um, all the best. Uh, risk is what we take as traders. Um, you know, as some of my friends normally say that we're, not, we're in the markets not to lose money <laughs> rather than making money. So, <laughs> so we have to make sure that um, we are going to take a risk and we understand that it is a risk and we should be able to manage it more effectively by using Absolutely. good risk management strategies. Absolutely. Um, so, sorry, apologies, I forgot to turn that phone off. Um, Okay, sorry. Uh, let's start again from uh, yeah the the quote about uh, we have to be in the markets to take risk. Yeah, as 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 some of my friends normally say to me that we are in the markets not to lose money. So uh, it's forget the part about making money. You just have to make sure that you don't lose the money that you have. So what we are doing over here is that we are limiting our risk. The risk is always there and the best possible advice I can give to someone is always have your trade with a bracket around it. So it's got to have a stop loss and a take profit. And hopefully market will go our way and uh, we continue to uh, be successful as traders as well. Absolutely. I, um, I was reading a quote um, I, a few days ago. I think it was from Paul Tudor Jones, who's you know, allegedly one of the most successful traders and, and worth, worth a, a, a few billion to say the least. Um, well, and he was saying, you know, he that how he is the most risk averse person on earth. He yep. hates to lose money. So it's it's interesting to see how people who, you know, are, have you know are are worth billions of dollars, uh, how yep. they say, look, I'm still very risk averse. I don't like losing money, and I am in this business not to lose money, which I thought was very very interesting. Absolutely, I, and, and I hundred percent agree with them. But some risks have to be taken. But as long as they're calculated risks, I mean, you wouldn't find a person like me going into a casino and betting on um, red or the black because I just don't know how to calculate what the chances are of black or red actually coming through. So this gives me that ability to be able to have some projections about the market and that's why I see this as a as a much more confident way of me um, being able to place a trade and hopefully getting a success out of that order. Absolutely. I think what the, the main takeaway that at least I get from, from our session today is that essentially what GAN's, are, GAN's angles are is 
an additional way of drawing support and resistance. As in, most people would look at a chart and, and based, of intu based on intuition say, oh, I think the supports are here, I think the resistances are here. Whereas what GAN has given us is say, look, you know, there's a number of ratios that are occurring and they have proven to be happening over and over again. So instead of drawing supports and resistances based on your gut feeling, why don't you use these ratios to draw supports and resistance and guess what? they're a lot more accurate. Absolutely, spot on, exactly that. And this is exactly what, what Gan was doing. Great, excellent, Malik. It's been a true, true pleasure having you uh, with us today. Thank you so much for your time and uh, keep in touch. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure um, and hopefully we'll be in touch soon.